In the book of Matthew, in the book of Matthew, chapter number 4, and we're going to read, read verses 18 through 20. Matthew 4, 18 through 20. And it reads as follows. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon, called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. They were fishers. Verse 19. And he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway or immediately left their nets, and they followed him. Church, I'm teaching today from the life building, life blessing, and prayerfully life changing message. I there's, there's a lot of messages I preach, but today I preach that this message would change your life in a way that maybe other messages have not. And the title for today's message is, Will You Follow Me? Will You Follow Me? It's a, it's a very important question, and it's something that I want you to really, uh, in the next few days, I want you to do like they said about Mary and hide, it, hide these things in your heart and ponder them. And ask yourself this question. Will you follow me? Will you follow me? Uh, the key statement, I have two key statements. The first one is, every good leader has a good destination. In other words, they, they have some place that, they, that they're trying to get to. And if they're a good leader, it's a good place. Somebody say good place. And then the second key statement is, every good leader needs some good followers to get there. If you study history, you'll find out that no good leader can get to his good place or destination without some good followers. Can I get an amen? amen? Even Jesus, he had an assignment from the Father, but he couldn't get there without some good followers. And that's why this foundational text said he called them. Do you realize the very First thing that Jesus is saying to these disciples is follow me. That's the very first thing he said. And he didn't say a whole lot of stuff before that. He said follow me. Somebody say follow me. Follow me. Now, we know that Jesus is the great shepherd. Amen. I'm so glad today that the call to worship was about him being the good shepherd. The Bible says he's also the great shepherd. And he is Somebody say, he's just talking about Jesus. He is the great leader of the church. Not just truth and love, but the whole church. The called out ones. Uh, Paul says it like this in Ephesians. He's the head of the church. Amen? Amen. Somebody say, Jesus. Jesus. Come on, church, work with me today. Somebody say, Jesus, Jesus. is the head. Is the head. And, we and we are the body. All right, can I get an amen? amen? Okay. Now, Jesus is the head of the church, but I need you to understand that there was a time that he returned to heaven. That was called, some people get this confused. That wasn't called the resurrection. The resurrection was when he resurrected from the dead, but after he resurrected from the dead, he was still on the earth for 40 days. I'm talking about the ascension. Uh, are you with me? Mm -hmm. So Jesus ascended to heaven. He left, he left the earth. The, the head left the earth. The leader, the great leader of the church left the earth. But because his work had to continue, he chose some to be leaders to carry on his ministry in the earth. I wish I could get an amen right there. Amen. And those ones that he chose. Well, let's see who he chose. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 11. It says, and he, somebody say, that's Jesus. That he is Jesus. And he gave some. Notice he didn't choose everybody. Amen to God. I mean, it's just the way it is. He, he picked some. It's just like on a team. Everybody can't be the quarterback. Can I get an amen? amen. But doesn't mean you're not on the team. And it doesn't mean your role is not important. At the end of the game, most games that I see at the end of the game is some little guy that's, that, that, that's uh, 
weighs less than everybody in the whole team that wins the game. He's called the kicker. And he comes out there, he's about, you know, 100, 150 soaking wet. And he, boop, wins the game. So everybody on the team is important. Turn your name and say, you're important. You're important. All right. But he chose some to be the quarterbacks, okay? Watch this. He gave some to be apostles and some to be prophets and some to be evangelists and some to be pastors and teachers. Say pastor, teacher. Pastor. Now, if, you, if you've been around the things of God for a little while, you understand that there's two camps about this scripture. One camp calls it the five-fold ministry. Another camp calls it the four-fold ministry. You know what? We ain't going to worry about that. The bottom line is, I, neither camp, if you believe in either side, none of that's going to have anything to do with whether or not you get to heaven. Amen? Amen. And, and here's the thing that both camps agree with, that is he chose some to be pastors. All right? I lean towards the, the fourfold in the sense that a pastor, the office is a pastor teacher. If a pastor's not teaching, he's not a pastor. Amen. Amen. So anyway, he gave some to be pastor teachers. Watch this. Jesus is the great shepherd. And he chose some pastor teachers to be his what? Under shepherds. His under shepherds. In other words, Jesus had to leave so he could go in and see for us at the right hand of the Father. But he still needed some pastors some under shepherds to carry on the work of Christ. If you believe what I'm saying, say amen. amen. The under shepherds, in other words, pastors, are not Jesus. But they've been given the assignment to carry forth the work of Jesus. I, so, today I'm asking a question. The question is, will you follow me? That's a question. It's a very important question. I said I'm an under shepherd. I didn't say I'm the great shepherd. And I, and, and, and I know who the great shepherd is. He's Jesus. Tur turn to somebody and say, Pastor said. Because I want this to be real clear. I want this on, this is being recorded. So I want it to be real clear so the devil don't get no place. Say it with me. Say, Pastor said. Pastor said. He's, not he's not Jesus. He knows that. He knows that. But he is, but he is. a chosen under shepherd. And he's, and he's asking the question that Jesus asked. That Jesus asked. Will, you follow me? Will you follow me? I'm asking that same question. I'm asking that same question. Now actually, Jesus, uh, if you study it, I think by the Spirit of God, Jesus didn't ask the question. He just said, follow me. Jesus made a statement. In fact, he made a command. He said, follow me. I'm asking a question. I'm asking, will you follow me? Now, you say, Pastor, what gives you the right to ask that question? Because it sounds too much like Jesus. Well, I think I stand in good ground because when Jesus left, he left men in the earth that he chose. Remember, he chose some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors and teachers. And none of them would have been of any effect unless they had some followers. Couldn't do it without any followers. And I'll give you one of the most famous scriptures that relates to what I'm talking about. And you can study it out on your own time. It's the Apostle Paul, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. And you know what Paul said? He said, follow me as I would. As I follow Christ. So let me qualify my question to you. Will you follow me as I follow Christ? Yes. That's a question. That's a question that each and every member of this church needs to answer. You know why? Because many of you have been with me for three years. Some have been two years. Some maybe one year. Some maybe not even one year. But I'm asking this question because it's a time of reflection. It's been three years, and the Lord laid this on my heart and said, you know what, Pastor? It's time. You need to find out who's ready to run with you. You need to find out who's ready to follow you as you follow Christ. Because guess why? Because the Lord has told me it's time to go to the next level, and guess what? And I, I'm not sure if everybody's willing to go. 
I'm not sure if everybody's willing to go. I, pre I appreciate that. Amen. I'm not sure if everybody's willing to go. But I got news for you, I'm going. Amen. I got news for you, I'm going. And I, and I would love to have everybody here under the sound of my voice not only follow me but walk with me. Because I'm asking you to follow me as I follow Christ and I think I got good reason to say that. Amen. Now, here's the thing. You should, in my opinion, and based on the scripture, you should follow and walk with your pastor unless there are some exceptions. It was so interesting that we would talk about this today. Because we were having ministerial training and it was like the, the, the Holy Ghost just, just touched uh, Brother Steve and he just he started talking about Jimmy Jones. And, and he had no idea what I was going to preach today. You know, Jimmy Jones was that guy that had the people to sell everything and, and, and uh, follow him down to Guyana or Jonestown. And basically he had them to drink the Kool-Aid and they all died. Had them to drink the cyanide and all die. That's when we get the expression, don't drink the Kool-Aid. Yeah. Amen. Well, I'm here to tell you, um, not only am I not Jimmy Jones, but here's the point. You know that that was crazy, not just because he's saying we need to move somewhere, but he told them he was the Christ. He told them he was the Christ. Church, I, I told you again, say it with me again, say, Pastor said, Pastor said. he's not Christ. Okay, I, I, that, so and say this would be again too. Pastor said, Pastor said don't believe anything. Don't believe he, says, he says if you can't prove it, you can't prove it in, the Bible. in the Bible. Can I get an amen? amen. This is a place when, when I before I started this church, God spoke this to my heart when we were in the hotel. He said, "I want you to tell the people." That's why I put it up on a banner. First thing I can do that this is a place of what. Safety, victory, and true prosperity. And that is not going to change. That came directly from the throne room. That's who we are. That's who we've been. And that's who we're going to be. And, and, and I'm looking for people who, who want to be at a place like this. Let's give God some praise. I'm looking for people who say, this, that's, what, that's what I want to be a part of. I want to be in a place of safety. Why is it a place of safety? Because you can be safe to know that I'm not going to tell you any false doctrine. Because I'm telling you from the very beginning, you're going to have to check out everything I'm saying. It's, it's your right and your responsibility to be like a Berean. To receive with a good heart what pastor's telling you. Praise the Lord, pastor. I agree with that. And let me go back home and make sure that what you're saying is right. Amen. Come on now. Somebody say, ain't nothing wrong with that. Say, so that's the word of God. That was the apostle Paul. He was telling them the scriptures. And they said, we receive with a readiness of mind, what Paul said. Then they said, we search the scriptures, how often? Daily. Daily. To see whether the things he said were so. See? So I stand, I stand with Apostle Paul. I'm not Christ, but I'm telling you and asking you to follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. Amen. And, and whatever I tell you, you can verify it in the word. So follow the pastor unless, somebody say, here are the exceptions. Yes. Unless he's doing something sinful. Well, you wouldn't know it's sinful unless you study the word, right? You got to know the word. You know, you listen. You, the Bible says, before the law, there was no sin. In other words, you don't know what sin is unless you know what the what the law is, right? You don't know you breaking the speed limit until you know what the what the limit is. Can I get an amen? amen. Well, also, I wasn't speeding. Did you see that sign back there? It said sixty-five. You understand what I'm saying? You have to know what the standard is. What is sin? Sin is missing the mark, falling short of the standard. So you have to know the standard. So he, he, you, you follow him unless he's doing something sinful. In other words, according to the word of God. Follow him unless he's teaching something unscriptural. What does that do? That tells you you got to know what's scriptural, right? <laughs> follow him unless what? Unless he's telling you to do something. Unless he's telling you to do something sinful, immoral, or harmful. If I'm telling you something, if it's not, watch this, if it's not sinful, if it's not immoral, if it's not harmful, guess what you should do? Follow it. Do it. Do it. Somebody say, just do it. 